Hello there! I did a previous video about how you can use SD cards with your good old sampler. In my case, the Roland XP5080, which is actually only a sample player, but that's not really matter. The solution for that was to use this new hardware product called Sulu Gazi or CSI. And this caused quite some questions. And yeah, maybe I was a little bit too fast with some explanations. And I also falsely expected that people would be familiar who use such old samplers with those old technologies as well which seems not to be the case so that's why i'm doing this second video and try to clarify these questions as well as trying to give you some understanding about these old technologies and the first one is to look at SCSI so actually we're talking here SCSI 2 which was published back then in 1990 with a revision in 94. And you only need to know basically two things about SCSI. First one is that each device has a specific ID and this is only in the range from zero up to seven. So you can have up to eight devices on such a SCSI bus. So what you also need to be aware of that the host, in our case, the sampler, or if you have multiple samplers on such a bus, which is also possible, you need also to give them a specific ID, which then reduces the number of devices which you can attach to them. So if you have one host, one sampler, you can attach up to seven hard disks or CD ROMs. And the second thing to understand is that the SCSI bus always needs a termination. This was back in the day, such an adapter you see here uh, on, on the lower part, which you had to plug into the last device. So the whole bus was terminated. This is also automatically handled for you now in software by the Sulu SCSI adapter. But in case, if you integrate more real devices, you need to be aware of that fact that the Sulu SCSI needs to be the last one to have this termination. So the next thing that caused several questions was my use of the CD ESO image. And so what is actually a CD? So the compact disc was normally used for audio, but you could also store data on it on these CDRs, those are writable CDs, and they could contain up to 650 megabytes, but they normally you could also get some larger ones with 80 minutes, which was then 700 megabyte, uh, something to point out is this megabyte or MIB, the difference is just a factor of 1000 or instead 1024. So the size is a little bit different, but that's only a minor detail. And this ESO format is actually a file format, which for files, which you can use on your computer, maybe a PC or Mac or whatever, which contains the content of such a CD. So it's not a CD, it's not physical, it's a file containing these data from a CD. And this is a kind of in-between format to store the content of such a CD on your computer. And also most of the operating systems allow to mount this ESO file and then it can show up as a real physical CD-ROM, which you can then also read the content from that. One thing to note is that this ISO file is only as big as the data which it contains. So it's not always 650 or 700. It can be any size dependent on the data. Also, if you burn it to a real CD, which you still can do, you will see that this CD is also not fully written. It only writes on the CD the data that is there in this file. Another question was, if I mount such an ISO file as a virtual CD, drive on my computer, can I read and write to that? This depends on the actual format which is used in that. So what is the file system of your sampler? If it's also plain FAT, which can be easily read by Windows or also other systems, then this works. If not, you need a special software for that. For example, chicken systems, translator can also access such file systems. Then another thing of confusion was the SD card. 
And I now also understand where this uh, confusion came from because there is also this SCSI 2SD, which I also mentioned in the previous video. And this works a little bit different. SCSI 2SD requires you to have a specific format of your SD card, which is not necessary with Sulu SCSI. And that's a big advantage of Sulu SCSI. Sulu SCSI, you can simply format it with plain FAT32 or EXFAT, and this will then be readable by computer. For SCSI 2SD, you need a specific software which is delivered with SCSI 2SD, and, but we don't need to look into that. So just use your SD card, which is normally formatted in FAT out of the box. So this will work directly. And then you can simply copy your contents or your ESO files to that drive. And these are up to seven files. So that's, this is the maximum number of drives. As I explained before, for SCSI, you can have, and there is a simple naming convention for that. The file is either called CD or HD. So depending if you want to have a read-only CD drive or if you want to have a writable hard disk drive. And then you simply add the ID of that SCSI device to it. And then one of the endings, ISO, HDA or IMG, whichever you prefer. And so these are examples. So you can have HDO, ISO or CD5, ISO, um, yeah, numbers can also be skipped, so you do not need to have all of them. You just need to add the numbers and the names of the devices you want to show up in your sampler. Then the question was, how do I create such a file? And there was a little bit confusion about the CD burner, which works fine. And I also made an error there because I simply copied then the ISO file and renamed it to an HDA, which actually worked. But the thing is that then this hard disk was only as large as my CD-ROM, which was actually pretty small because I, I don't know, it contained only 12 megabyte or something of data. So also my hard disk was only 12 megabyte of data, which is not what you normally want. So there are neater ways to create such an empty hard disk. And on Windows, for example, there is this FSUtil and on Mac, there is this DD command line as well as on Linux. Uh, I'm not going into detail in that. You can find many explanations how to do that or how also to clone a full hard disk if you have a real old one to such a file. You can find, for example, here an explanation how to do that. I just want to show that how that works on Windows. So you open up a command prompt, for example, PowerShell. You cannot see that because it's on my second monitor. I just uh, open the Windows prompt, type in PowerShell and say I want to run it as administrator. And then you have it here and there you can simply copy in that command, which means I want to create up to this. This is a number in bytes. So if you calculate that to a gigabyte, it's either two gigabyte with an I in it or 1.86 uh, gigabyte if you calculate with 1024. So let's do that. And yeah, you can ignore the German here. It just said uh, the file was created actually in a place I did not want to put it. I actually wanted to create it here on the desktop. Let's do that again. And this was also created. Here is a file. And if you look at the properties of that file, you will see, yeah, that's exactly what we expected it to have. And the only thing now you need to do is to simply look at your SD card, which is here and where I already have this CD-ROM image from the last time. And we can also check what is the format of that drive. And you see it's here formatted for EXFAT. And so this worked fine for me. And we need now to copy over our new created to gigabyte file, which takes a bit because it's two gigabyte. So, and when it's finally be done, we can use it in our sampler. I just noticed there is one O too much. So it's only one zero we need to have on the file name. And then you can now format it on your sampler and use it as a hard disk. I hope this cleared up many of your questions. If there are still open questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments. And if you got this working, enjoy it and make some funky music. <laughs>